Taurus Kier and a uh, little bit uh, confused here because I'm not seeing myself over where I'm supposed to see myself. So hold on one second. Let me see something here. I def video. Yeah, here we go. Virtual camera. All right. All right. So today we're talking about green screen, how to properly light your green screen. So welcome everybody to let's get down to business. And I am your host, Jeremy Torsk, and we are going to get this. I got a feeling though, something ain't right. Oh, here we go. Yeah. Something is right. Good. I'm, I'm on here. LinkedIn. Everyone can see me on LinkedIn and on Facebook here. We will be live momentarily on Facebook. So I can see everybody's comments on LinkedIn. So if you're watching this on LinkedIn, that's great. And if oh, there we go, put that volume down. So I've got everything you see here in a shopping cart in Amazon. I'll tell you everything that I'm using. I'll tell you the price tags and I'll put the links in the videos. And with full disclosure, I will also promise you that I'm making zero dollars off affiliate links. Uh, none of these are affiliates. Everything here is something that I bought myself with my own money and I've tried a million things and these are what works best. So with that promise, whatever I show you today is more of a prosumer grade, which what does that mean? That means you probably aren't gonna use this stuff at your house, in your house. It's probably not gonna use this stuff for your living room, but you could. You could absolutely use everything that you're going to see here today in your living room or a bedroom, uh, but you need a little bit of real estate. I'm going to show you how to set up a green screen uh, without any effort, which one I bought. I'm going to tell you how, what kind of lighting I'm using, and I'm not going to get into today the cameras or the cable switchers, the camera switchers, the stream decks, the Rode microphone system. I'm not going to get into all that today. We are going to stick with the, the facts of how to light, properly light a green screen so that yourself, you, will look like a natural setting and go from this to this to this in a few steps. And actually, this is horrible because I don't have anything lit yet. All this is is a green screen behind me push that button and there's no green screen. I'm gonna show you how we do that, but it's gonna look a lot better when I light it. So let's start with looking at the wrong camera, first of all. I've got two cameras set up here. Here's the one camera that I'm used to looking at. And here's the camera that I have way back there, kind of get all this on a pulled out view. First of all, this particular green screen. All right, this particular green screen. Go to my orders is uh, a really cool thing because it's a bi or it's a trifold green screen in other words these things actually fold in on each other there's four panels here and they fold in on each other it cost 159 dollars and i'll put again i'm going to put all of this stuff in hold on get this nope that won't work that sucks it cost 159 it is by GS Kwin. I'm going to put the links in there. Don't even bother. <laughs> but it's $159. I'll tell you the, the measurements. It's 13 feet across and seven, almost eight feet high. But it doesn't have to be that big. It can come in and fold a little square, or you can just use three sections. You don't have to use all four sections. So the reason I like this is because of the nice roundness so you can get back here and get the roundness um, where the other ones are just flat and these things stretch out really nice which is the most one of the most important thing is to have a flat green screen this green screen is really flat which is a very big uh, positive positive point for this thing so if if you wanted a smaller footprint you could actually just use one of these panels two of the sides and then kind of just do it a little bit smaller so let me show you one of the biggest things, why a green screen and why lighting is so important. If I come back here, I've got no lights on 
and you can kind of see if I go to camera one, the shadow makes it a little bit funny. It, it's, it, it makes funny things happen. If you can see, I've got shadows. If I turn this light on, and I'm standing too close to it, it gets a little bit, now I've got some really good camera equipment, so it helps, but you get, it gets a little bit funny. When you come out here past this light, it gets better. So if you're too far into the light that's lighting your green screen and you get uh, some shadows, which I clearly have shadows over here, your hands start getting, they start acting funny. But if I'm here, behind this line where the light is filming the green screen and I'm going to be lit by another source, you're going to see I'm going to be look a lot better and a lot less uh, granular and all these green motions when you move your hands. That won't, ha won't happen as much. So first, let's start off with what am I using for equipment? This is the Emeron 100X. These are the, these are the, these are the lights that I'm using to light the green screen. If you can see behind me, if I turn this one off, it's just these panels lights that are on here. But what I'm gonna do is hook up another one. Right here, I've got the, one of these up here. I'm gonna put another, another one of these on this stand. And so I'm gonna light the screen right behind me so that the screen is lit behind me and I'm gonna be in front of that light. Okay, so this is how we do that. Come back here. This is a C stand. It's a heavy duty stand and you just plop this here and tighten that there. That's step number one. Amaron 100X. You wanna talk about pricing for these things. These go for 197 so $200 for this, and you need two of them, so it's 400 bucks. I'm gonna show you some alternatives though. Right, right away, it's not gonna be that much money uh, for your house. I'm gonna show you how to do it a little cheaper, but these is a, this is probably the lowest you wanna go for prosumer grade. So not professional, not consumer, but I'm gonna show you over here, I've got off camera uh, some consumer grade stuff that is gonna be about half these prices that I'm showing you now, but we'll work good. It'll work, it'll work well. So we're gonna put this camera on this stand and then I'm gonna hook the battery up to it. Or not the battery, it's actually a charger, but we, we have batteries for when we go remote. But it comes with a really hefty batter, uh, pack, electrical pack converter. So it's super heavy, but it's got a hook here. So you can kind of hook it there and just simply plug this in. Now this is a, it's called a bicolor light, which means it's got pretty much white and yellow. And you can control that color by dialing these, these knobs here. These knobs, one is, one is intensity, so zero to 100% on intensity. And then one is got uh, different, they're called Calvin. Uh, it's the amount of units that they, they you uh, gauge light in from yellow to white, the, the whole array actually. So we're gonna talk about that in a second. Let me plug this in and turn it on. You're gonna see, because I have nothing here on the front of it, it's just gonna be a circle beam coming out. If you notice here on this one, I've got this, uh, this light uh, adapter on here. Now these things are called, uh, and this one is an aperture light dome. They're $99 each, but they're worth it. And you're, gonna, you're gonna see why. But you know, again, you don't have to buy these light domes for $100 each, because that makes this thing $300 combined. But you can also just, it comes with these things. So you can soften it up. Again, these are all prosumer grade stuff. You don't really need to have the top of the line stuff. But if you've got the room, and depending on the content you're making, you might want to go a little bit higher and get this kind of stuff. But these domes, they just simply click in like that into form this larger shape. So 
they store easily when they're not using it and they're really easy to set up. Now I've got another one behind here that's gonna light me later. That's a 200 Emeron 200X. And I tell you, this thing is, it's probably three times as big as this and it's much harder to do, but uh, you've got, it comes with this, nothing on. We're gonna put some filters on it here. which is basically just a little sheet here of translucent material so that softens the light. And it's just Velcro, so you just stick it on here. There we go. Really easy to do and fast. So once you get that on there, it's gonna soften the light up. So let me turn this on without this on there. And you can kind of see from this angle, if I turn up the intensity, what it does here, turn down the intensity, and then I'm gonna turn the colors. This one is intensity. See how it's lighting more of it. But you don't wanna have it here, it's in your shot, right? You're not gonna stand here in front of the light. It's not gonna work, especially when you see the shadow here. Let me show you what it does to the green screen here when you have big shadows, it, it really does uh, mess with it. So what you wanna do is have these two crisscross each other. That's why you need two of them. But I just wanted to kind of show you the intensity of this thing like this. But when you add this onto it, it just kind of clicks in. It's much easier to do without that on there, but there you go, here the click. Click this on here like that. And now it's softened. Now, this is horrible. You wouldn't want this, right? This is the, the intensity is up. It's at 100%. Let me turn it down to 28%. Turn the Calvin from 27 to 57. Now it's a softer white light. But again, you want to take this and move it out to a 45 degree angle. And you want them approximately even with each other horizontally this way, left and right access, okay? You turn this one on. Now this one's at 51% 3,400 Kelvin. 51% 3,400 Kelvin. So I wanna turn this one to 51% and 3,400 Kelvin. There we go, so now they're matched. And you can kind of see the lower half is not covered. How, how, do, how, how I could fix that is by bringing these further back, which I don't want to do because I need to be in front of it. So how, you see how you can see me? You see how I start getting light? But more importantly is you see my shadow. You see that shadow? This is what plays havoc on green screen stuff. But as I come away from it, as soon as I hit this mark, no more shadows because all the light's behind me. What's going on down here? Well... What's going on down there doesn't really matter as much because I'm only filming from here up, okay? So we're gonna push this one a little bit further out of scene. And we're gonna tilt it this way so that it, it's lighting across the green screen at an even pattern, all right? And again, I'm gonna back up and you can see my shadow. All right, but I'm going to take one step, two steps, two and a half steps. It's about six feet from me to this screen. All right, so I've got about four feet or so. Maybe I'd guess this is probably also six feet, six feet. So if you're in a room, automatically you need six feet just to light the green screen properly, All right? Beyond that, you need room for your cameras. Beyond the six foot here that you need to be behind the light, you need to have the camera. The camera from here to this first camera that you're seeing right here is about another six feet. So if your room is a 12 foot room, it's gonna be tight. But if, as soon as you get 13, 14 feet, you're gonna be good. You can have this set up. Now across, I mean, I'm six foot, so you have a six foot wingspan here probably eight, 10, maybe 10 by 12. So your minimum room needs to be about 14 by 12 for this to work, 
Okay, remember this thing is 13.87 feet or so across, but we have it kicked in. So if you got a 12 foot room, that's probably gonna be okay. And then these are gonna be about eight feet apart from each other, six feet from the wall, and another six feet to the camera. So these two lights, 51%, 3,400 Kelvin. And now I'm gonna turn this light on. This is a 200X. So it's the big one, it's off camera, but it's just like these lights, but it's, it's a little bit bigger. And I'm gonna turn that one on. They're all, by the way, controlled with your phone. I was doing it by hand, but you can just go right here to the app to hit the 200X. I've got four lights in this studio. Three of them is what we're using today. One of them is another room, but this is a 200. I'm just gonna turn that on and watch me. Let's go turn the green screen on. Let's come close. And you see I'm pasty. Now the shadow is good. See, I'm not here, so the shadows are fine but I'm pasty. So I want to add some light by turning this light on. And now I've got some light coming across my face. That's 49%. The Calvin is 3,900. These are at 3,400. So I'm going to take this down. I, you know, if I want it whiter, I'm going to come up to 6,500. If I want it more yellow, I come down to 27. I think that's too intense. So I'm going to back that down a little bit. And I think that's pretty good right there. So now, now I'm talking to you with a, a cross light. And again, this is about six feet away from me at an angle. So the light's casting a shade. By the way, notice the windows are behind me. So you'd want to have another light kind of you can mount it up there at the top of, at the top of your, um, your green screen frame and kind of just have a little light behind you. See how I have this light behind me? That's these LEDs, but if I didn't have those, I could absolutely have a little teeny light behind me casting a light on, on my hair. So it shows that, that light from that window there in the picture uh, uh, showing, you know, like if I'm facing this way, you'd want this light here coming from the direction of that, win of that window. So keep that in mind. You don't want to have a window in your green screen behind you or your, frame, your, your virtual frame. You don't want the window there and the light hitting you from this way. It's not a natural look. You want to set the light over here so that the window is casting a light on you, which is the light that you've manufactured. So what I'm going to do now, and these things are, here's what's coolest. We're going to get into this another day, but these things here go from green screen to your green screen, go from camera one to camera two. We're going to get into all of these toys, another Tech Tuesday. This is an ATEM Mini Pro, a Stream Deck, uh, you know, it's called a stream, Elgato uh, Stream Deck. It lets you do a lot of fun stuff. And then my Rode Procaster over there for my microphones. We'll get into all that. I've got different microphones. We're going to do a podcast, how to set up a podcast room uh, next week also. So you'll be able to see what that all looks like. Let's see if there's any comments really fast here because I have not been paying attention whatsoever. There we go. Oh, boy. Looks like we got a lot of comments. We got Sean, my brother Sean, and Aaron's on here. All right, good. Uh, great info. You see the new green screen I bought. <laughs> we'll get I'll, I'll, Sean. Thanks for that, Aaron. I see your messages. I appreciate you guys. Let me show you now some lower end lights that you can get instead of these prosumer grade lights and stands. These. This is. I'm going to go from top to bottom. This is a newer. And it's not that it's newer, it's pronounced and spelled newer. Again, I, I'm gonna put it all in the, in the, in the chat. Um, N-E-E-W-E-R, and these are 6,600 R's, I believe. Uh, they're, they're good, because they're multicolor. So not only do they have the white to yellow, but they've got also like the reds and the purples and the blues and the greens. And they're also available to be controlled by your phone, and you can actually hook, hook batteries onto these. So these can travel, they're much, much lighter than these. But again, you would do one here, you do another one here, and then you might have another one of these raised up and tilted down, and then you control these things and have it over here for me. So you cross light. So with, with four of these, let's say, now these are $255 for a set of two, two of them. So you can get four of these. You can have a backlight, 
a cross light here, a key light it's called. You can have your two green screen lights just with this. And because these have these plates, they are adjustable where you can widen and narrow your light with these things. So you can control the light and they've got Kelvin control and intensity just like these big expensive ones. But they're much more compact, they're much, they travel much better and they work amazingly well and they don't get hot. So the best thing about these lights, all of these lights I'm using, is that they're all LED, which means that when the actors or the speakers are here that I'm, I'm recording, they are not getting hot, they're staying cool. So this is a newer N-E-E-W-E-R, I believe it's 660, I can never find the damn thing on here, 660R, yeah, there it is, 660 Pro. $225 for two of them with the carrying case. Uh, they may or may not come with these stands, but these stands are very cheap, like $13. Um, but the important part about these stands too, if you want to look, these, it's important to have these types of ends. You don't want to have this screw that's going all the way down because then these don't tend to catch on to that screw head very well and then it's wobbly and winky. So you want to have these. Now you can, if you, if you buy stands with these, you can get these adapters that screw right on to the thread. So don't worry if you already have these stands, you could just buy these adapters that screw onto that, that head. And that tends to hold these lights much better. So this is the second most expensive, the, the, the Amaron 100X is the 200, 175, 100, all these lights are, are more expensive. These are less expensive, but it's still the, the second highest. These are 225 for two of them. The next one I'll show you, I'm gonna show you two different ones because they're good for, they're, they're depending on what you're doing. This is called a blade, I call it a blade light and it's not remote control, but it is variable. So you can get, it's only white, but it's variable. And I love these things because you can tilt them in any way, you can put them sideways with another adapter. Um, so it can light the floor, it could light the ceiling. It could be a great key light for behind you. Get, just get up, take it off this stand. And I mean, it's got a very long cord. I don't want to jack around with that, but take it off the stand. You can wedge this up there. These could be great key lights, but these I believe are right around the $90 mark for two of them. Somewhere in that like $89. I call them blade lights. Again, I'm going to put the link to the, all of these in the, uh, comments later today, but uh, but these are amazing. About ninety bucks for two of them, and I think they come with the stand. These are what do I call these things? I can't ever tell which way the writing goes because it's all jacked. H P U S N looks like, but newer makes a model of these, and these are very very soft. So I'm get coiled up in this cable here. These are soft boxes, so they come with these really, really large light bulbs, right? And these are controlled by a remote control as, as well, and you can um, do intensity and your Kelvin, but it's not near as much as these, and it emits a much lower, lower, lower amount of light. So this would be good for, uh, if you have a very small room, and you wanted to light yourself, you see how close I could put this and not be in the camera frame? Okay, where I go back here, that's this light, and it's not, in my, look how close it is, it's only a foot off this camera, where if I bring this thing in, it's, gonna, it's just a little too big to have that close. But this little one here, but it's not gonna be as bright and you're not gonna have the control that you're gonna have with these Amarons. But these are good for very soft lighting if you have to have, to have um, nuance. I'm going to take a second, shut off these LED lights up here because I want to show you how important it is not to have LEDs because if you have your LEDs, what I'm going to do is go to fixtures. I'm going to turn off all of these lights. This is going to go dark for a second. We're going to have fun with this. Okay, I'm going to go to camera two. Give me a second. I'm with you here verbally. I'm going to just show you. Turn off the lights. And I've got some sunlight coming in in front of me. So that's natural sunlight coming in front of me. I'm going to turn these lights back on. Fixtures. 
So you can kind of see when those LED lights on how important it is to have the right amount of light above you, next to you, across you. So I'm going to take this 200 amber on here, turn on my green screen, and just turn this intensity up right there. Then I'm going to come here to my fixtures here, take my hundreds, turn this up just a little bit here, this other hundred, turn this one up. You can kind of see, I, I'm, I'm starting to get a little bit better light. Go back to my fixture, go back to my 200. And boy, see, I could look like an alien. That's white and yellow. But if I come over here and just drag this thing a little bit closer, you see, it's just, it's just not that. When you got your overhead lights, and I'm going to turn those back on. And it's going to make all the difference in the world because now I've got a nice soft LED light that's helping me. So I'm going to take this back, my fixture, to the 200 and back that back down. So you sometimes you get these lights and you want to, you know, do a, a little bit of testing with them and, and you want to use them a little more because you spent all the money on them. But these natural lights that you have in, in your house, they, they, they're actually okay as long as they're not causing different rays of lights. These are so, really soft LED lights that we had installed in here. So they give off nice, even um, amounts of light. They're, they're spaced evenly and they, they do a good job. If you just have a light bulb, you wouldn't want that. You would want that off. You'd want to open up your windows, get these lights in get a bigger light on you. So that's it for today. Uh, I know it was a bit of a cluster muck because it's, it's live, it's not polished. People who create these videos go through the same thing I did today, but they cut, 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 edit, edit, edit. I just wanted to show you real time what it takes to set these lights up, to properly light a green screen, and so where you have to stand, how much space that you need, and what kind of equipment that you can use. I hope you took all of that information. I hope it's useful. I hope it's entertaining. I hope I did a good job uh, today with showing you a little bit, uh, how to get a little bit better with your camera video content, with your green screen stuff that you could do. And next week we'll show you some cool tools that you can use to really do a lot of these cool one, two, three, but push button, change out, ipso facto stuff to make your video content a little more interesting besides you just you know, filibustering and moving around <laughs> and putting yourself out there like I do. So I hope that helps you out. My name is Jeremy Torsk. It's time to get down to business. Hit me up if you need any help with this. I can help you virtually. I can help you in person. That's what I'm here to do to help you get 1% better. Coachingdonebetter.com. Join for free. Become a coach for $99 a month. And we will see you again tomorrow at 2.30. See ya. We will see you again tomorrow at 2.30. See ya.